Tide Podcast. Here we go. Hello, hello, around the block and around the world. This is where we discuss, debate, and deliberate all things diabetes. Representing type 2, my name is Dobie Maxwell. Representing type 1, the vivacious, effervescent, and always in the know, Sammy Parker. We'll get to Sammy in seconds. But first, today's episode of Just My Type is sponsored by the Diabetes App, a free social community app that brings together both type 1 and type 2 diabetics, plus their supporters. That would include Sammy and me. Find community resources and Sammy and me on the Diabetes App. The buzz on the rumor mill, Sammy, is you just had a fun vacation. I did. How does that work? You work a half an hour a day and you took a vacation. I'm sorry, Dobie. <laughs> you didn't invite me along. I'm jealous. I like to call it a self-care trip for the blood sugars, of course. Hopefully you can write it off your taxes. Exactly right. Yeah. I think that's what my, my dad would hope for. <laughs> did you go somewhere fun? I went to Hawaii. Well, that's pretty fun. I love it. I love, 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 love Hawaii. My middle name's even Hawaii. Only there one day and it rained, of course. So tell me some good things so our listeners can vicariously you assume it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous and heavenly in a paradise. Yeah, my my middle name's actually Hawaiian because my mom's side's from there. So it's Leilani, which means heavenly flower. Wow. Okay. Don't get me started on that. Anyway. I know, right? Pretty official. Pretty official. Anything I can use in future episodes when you're having the salty sugars, I say, come on, heavenly flower. <laughs> Come on, Heavenly Flower. Come on, my little Leilani. Come back on the good spot, little Leilani. Sammy Leilani. Yes, Sammy Leilani. That's my personal Instagram, guys. Dobie is actually the Hawaiian origin name, too. Oh, that. really? What does it stand for? It means the pineapple is rotten. That's what it means. Oh. Dobie. No, they need, a, they need like a drink, the Dobie drink. They would. Yeah. The double D. It would be type two friendly. It's like the double D, the Dobie drink, also the DD. The guzzler. Let's talk about, uh, we're, we're talking about vacation, but we have an, an, a bigger theme today. Yes. Bigger fish to fry. Yeah, we do. And it's a big one. Kind of ironic because the reason I like grocery stores is because I like cooking because it keeps my blood sugars lower. But currently my blood sugar is 275, which if we all know, that's just not very good. That was the weight of my last blind date, coincidentally, 275. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm supposed to be starting my that time of the month, that menstrual cycle, which means mm -hmm. blood sugars are elevated, hormones are going, so I'm a little insulin resistant. But that's why I love going to the grocery store because I get lots of tips and tricks for myself that help me be able to cook and keep my blood sugars lower. Well, this is why we get along so well as a co-host because I can't stand it. It is a nightmare for me as a single male and a type two in my entire life. I just dread going to the grocery store because technically- Well, rumor has it, Doby, you meet a lot of people at the grocery store. You can meet a nice lady- at the grocery store. Yeah, and I start uh, coming up with a conversation and bumbling and stumbling and it goes really well. And it's like, oh, my boyfriend would think you're so funny. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's not the call then. <laughs> I'm going to buy some kale. I'm going to buy something healthy. That might not be the It's call. intimidating for me because the food store, in theory, like communism on paper, sounds good. The grocery store on paper sounds, well, it should have food there. And a lot more of them now uh, have pre-prepared foods. But to go in there, I'm not a cook, and it's like, it's this is not the last place I want to go when I'm hungry. So let's come from your positive point of view and win us over as type twos, how it can be a positive experience for us too. Okay, so first thing, I think we should just kind of go back and forth, maybe some like ideas we have. But I think the important okay. part about understanding why, like tips and tricks to, you know, going to the grocery store, it's important because when you go to a grocery store, it's so big, like you said, it's overwhelming. And I think when people get overwhelmed, they tend to go easily to like convenient things, which is normally bagged things and unhealthier options, things that are closer to the front of the store because they don't want to have to find stuff. And as we know, our world loves prioritizing unhealthy food. So they're going to just put easy, ac like easy accessible food to the front so that people grab it and go, mainly for business purposes as well. So... One of my number one things that I think is so important is staying on the outskirts of the grocery store. And I know that a lot of people talk about this. You like the outer aisles, you mean? Is that what yes. you're talking about? Okay. Like, like outer aisles, but like the perimeter of the grocery store. So like okay. when you walk into a grocery store, maybe you go first to the produce section and you start at the produce and then you just go all the way along the backside all the way around. The reason for that is because majority of those things are refrigerated. Like if you've noticed, like when you go to the grocery store, the produce obviously is refrigerated. Correct. Then you go to the milk section and then you can go to the meats and proteins. And then you go to the other side and it's sometimes frozen stuff, but like a lot of it is just 
healthier options and they're on the outskirts because people naturally gravitate towards like the middle aisles that are by the checkout. It's a psychological mind game anyway, because you just walk in the grocery store, we're thinking about a million things as customers, but they, every space on that shelf and every shelf in every aisle, and like you say, the outer perimeter outskirts and, and in skirts and upskirts and downskirts, they're all planned to get us to spend the most money. Exactly. And so the thing for me, the another tip is that I like to talk about this one because I think it's a good one. It kind of goes hand in hand with going to the outskirts because so like, let's say, you know, you walk into a grocery store and, and you're like, okay, what am I going to get today? Like, um, I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't know what I'm in the mood for. So I'm just going to get whatever calls at me. Well, a lot of times when you go in without like a grocery list, you kind of are going to just grab whatever you want and try new things. And some of those things might not be healthy because you get sidetracked and you're like, Ooh, but this says it's whole wheat and it's sugar free and blah, 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 blah. It's organic. It's low fat, but it has 75 carbs, right? So you kind of get caught up on this like, ooh, these are new products or, oh, this is a new one. I haven't seen this. I'm going to try it. And what happens is you grab all these new different types of snacks. They might be even like vegan snacks or paleo snacks, but just because it has a word on it, defining a diet does not make it healthy. And I think a lot of times when you get those foods, those are snacky foods. And then what happens is you go home and you just kind of end up eating and grazing at it. And that's what, number one, causes a spike in blood sugar, elevated blood sugars, and two, which is excess caloric intake, which we know causes insulin resistance. And it's a vicious cycle. I got to hop in here, kiddo, because uh, you said you're getting home. Huh, doesn't leave the car. You know, I'm, I'm in the freeway chowing down, reaching down in the bag. Ooh, this looks good. Cheese. Hey, this is going to it's gonna freeze or thaw out. So you have to eat it. Yeah. And here's the thing. I want to get our listeners on the same page because uh, most of our listeners are in North America. And some are other places, are granted. And the United States, uh, especially, I uh, can't speak for Canada, puts unhealthy things and there's different laws about what you can say. So it's really a trick game when you go to the grocery store. And I'm trying to think, okay, now a plan, one of the tips that I had come up with too is shop with a list. But the first one I want to throw in there, and I learned this from my grandparents that raised me. They grew up in the greatest generation and the Great Depression, and we wouldn't go out to eat very often. But when we did, we would go grocery shopping completely after that. And their tip was never go grocery shopping on an empty when stomach. You're hungry. You will buy anything and everything that you don't need. It's like, oh, chocolate covered li- liver dipped in guacamole. I need a six pack of that because you're hungry. But when you go in there full, then it's like, okay, you have a much better mindset. Yeah. As to, okay, I'm going to buy what I need, not just I'm hungry now. I thought that was a wonderful tip. I learned it when I was eight years old. I think it's a great one. That's very true because. I'll even go in the grocery store sometimes if, like, I come back from a trip. Like, even my mom's going to the grocery store today. And in my head, I was like, it's so funny because if I was to go on an empty stomach, I'd be like, I'm going to get four cantaloupes. And I'm going to get this and that mm-hmm. and this and that. Sure. Because I'm so hungry. And then I get so excited. And I get home and I just start plowing down on it. And then I'm like, oh, I'm full. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, my stomach hurts. So I think that's a really good one, though. So the first one is, you know, stay on the outskirts. The second one for me is create a grocery list. And the other one that I think is also really important is processed foods have a very long shelf life. Mm -hmm. You could get a bag of chips and be like, "Mm, I'm going to save this for the 4th of July. And like, that's not till July and we're in May. So to me, anything that has a shelf life of longer than, well, okay, hold on. I take that back. Because like obviously rice and like beans and all of that, the shelf life's a very long time because it's not cooked already. But anything that's like cooked and already like ready to eat right away and it has a shelf life of longer than three weeks, toss her out. I moved into an apartment once. There was a Twinkie in there from the last people that lived there before I did. And I bet somebody could have eaten it and not known the difference. I didn't have the guts to try. But it was it was on the shelf, a Twinkie wrapped up. And I'm thinking, I could probably eat this and not even know the difference. No, and it's so bad. So we did this experiment when I was in my, um, I think it was in my undergrad, like at Pepperdine. And it was my freshman year. And we put like, I think it was like a fast food restaurant of fries. Mm-hmm. And we put them underneath like one of those like cake glass cases. And um, it stayed for three months. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fries. They did not change. Not change no at all. No hair on them. No fuzz. No no rot. Nothing. 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 And I was like, that is scary. Yes, it is. That's mm-hmm. scary. 
So my thing is, that's why I think like anything boxed, like just stay away from processed foods, honestly, because boxed stuff, any of that that has a long shelf life probably isn't the first thing you should be going for when you go in the grocery store. I do think there's a thing called fun foods. And I learned this from my sister who learned this from a professor at Pepperdine. And she calls unhealthy foods like when people are like, oh, well, that's unhealthy or that, oh, that's bad for you. She calls those fun, fun foods. foods. Okay. And fun foods are limited. Her name is Sunny Delano. And she calls them fun foods. Fun foods. Yes. So like a fun food would be, you know, dried mango for me is a fun food. I got to disagree with you. Mango is not a fun food. Mango is an exotic food. Okay. Let me explain. So mango, mm-hmm. regular mango. I eat all the time, nonstop. I just ate a whole bowl of mango. That's probably why I'm 275. But that is not mango. It's dried mango Mm -hmm. because dried mango for type 1 diabetics is like, it's like a diet suicidal. Your blood sugars just stay up and they don't drop. But you have to know that. Like when you eat it, you're like, okay. And that's fun. It's dried mango. Your blood sugar is going to go high because it's not, it's like so compacted and dried out of water that all the sugar, it's so dense in sugar and carbs that you just stay so high. Like it doesn't come back down. So that's why I call it a fun food. Diabetes fun food, I should say. But a fun food typically it would be like, yes, our producer Elizabeth said a pop tart or like I personally a fun food that's not for diabetes reasons would be a snickerdoodle. That's a fun food. That's just fun to say. Snickerdoodle. Come here, my little snickerdoodle. Come here, my snickerdoodle. That's something to say. You know, married couples say that. Hey, Snickers. Yeah, that is true. That's Can so you give true. me some dried mangoes, please? Yeah. I mean, honestly. So that's what I call, I think, noticing like, okay, I'm going to go and start at the outskirts, get everything I need. And then this trip to the grocery store, you know, obviously like, okay, shelf life, I take that back. Like condiments. Condiments obviously last longer than three weeks. That's like a known thing. But I'm saying like food, like substantial food that has a shelf life like that bread. long. I was heard if bread doesn't yes. mold within three days, you shouldn't eat it. Don't know oh, yeah, that's a I myth, a you. rumor. I read an article with that. And the best breads have preservatives in it because if you're a parent, you want to pack the kids' lunch. No, I totally agree with you. Even the healthy bread that they're like, it's homey, it's seeds and grains. I'm like, really? Because this bread has lasted two weeks. <laughs> but that's why I think otherwise, maybe go in with the grocery store and be like, okay, today I'm going to give myself two fun foods to pick. And those are your two fun foods. So you can allow yourself more than one fun food a day, a week, a month, a No, year. I think it's more like each grocery trip, you're like, okay, this grocery trip, I get two. Oh. But if you go grocery shopping the next time and you're going to go in another week, then maybe only pick one fun food. Okay, how important do you think freshness is when you shop? Like, I mean, sometimes you get stuff that's not so fresh. You get a little discount. I, as a single, uh, self-employed person, I have to watch a budget. And I go in there and thinking, okay, it doesn't have that much hair on it. I think I can buy it and eat it within a couple of days, blah, blah, blah. So I look at it, coupons. So like freshness as in what specifically? What kind of food of fresh? Produce okay. is a good example of that. What would it say? Would it say like $5 because it's expired tomorrow? No, but I mean, you know, bananas, you, you time your bananas. They're a little bit brown. You know, the green ones might last, I don't know, what, a week, 10 days. I don't know how long it is. Okay, so I'm going to be honest. I actually like... I like spotted bananas better. Um, I make some- You and my Aunt Charlene. She liked having hair on them. They were disgusting. She cut them up, put on her cereal. Oh my God, they're amazing. The spotted ones are so much better than the green ones. They're funky. They're nasty. No, they're so Wouldn't sweet. feed them to a drunk monkey. I love them. So I, I prefer okay, those. well, that's why we differ. But I don't think freshness, depending what it is, like I don't think it really, like honestly- Meat. Um, well- You don't eat meat. I don't eat meat, but I'm a firm believer- as far as freshness goes, to be completely honest, there's nothing in me that the only way it would be genuinely unhealthy is if you were like, it's spoiled or like bad meat. But otherwise, like I hate to say this. And that would be like a heat issue. Yeah. Like meat already has negative effects on health. Like it, it, it does scientifically like red meat, mm-hmm. you know, not eaten in moderation. So I don't really think it necessarily matters if it's like freshly cut or freshly not. I think it more matters of like, this is going to taste better than the other thing. But I think like as far as going like freshness with diabetes, I definitely think certain foods are more beneficial for maybe not as fresh. So like I said, bananas, weirdly, green bananas, they're great for diabetics actually because they don't cause a blood sugar spike. But uh, spotted bananas are not as starchy. So they like your blood sugar will go up, but then it comes back down. So like I would say for a diabetic, waiting and getting like, not as fresh bananas is better. You know, so certain foods, 
are different depending on the type of food and what it is. So what do you think the best foods for diabetics are in a grocery store? Because it's overwhelming to me. There's a million things in there and where I shop, and I think a lot of Americans do, there's these huge mega grocery stores. Not only grocery stores, they have department stores attached to them. So depending on where you go, diabetic friendly, think of 99% of the stuff I don't think I can eat. So here's what I'm going to say about that. I think there's a variety of foods that diabetics can find that are pretty easy too. And I think the number one ones that are very, very, very cheap is beans. Okay. That's a number one. Number two is rice. The third one, any vegetable. It does not matter what it is, any vegetable or any fruit. I would say the most beneficial and probably cheapest would be like, again, bananas or apples. Apples have really gone up. Really? Everything's going okay. up. What about... um? I definitely think potatoes are a great staple and they're pretty cheap and they last a very long time. Not high carbs in potatoes? They are, but they're not a negative high carb. So they are they don't hurt you. They're like better because they're slow acting. So your blood sugar will be more stable. Now, my grandmother always told me to eat the skin in the potato. Is that true or not true? Is that a- The skin is good. The skin has a lot of nutrients. Okay. Yeah. So I would say like potatoes or any kind of obviously vegetable or fruit, beans, rice, Honestly, like even popcorn's a good snack. If you're going to go for like a snack, then popcorn. Mm-hmm. Soy products are great, like edamame beans and tofu. Honestly, like lean chicken. Any kind of lean meat is beneficial for a diabetic because it doesn't have as high of a fat content. So you have three macronutrients in your body. It's protein, fat, and carbohydrate. And if you bind a protein and a fat together with a carbohydrate, it's just a lot going against a diabetic. So having either a high protein and a low fat or a higher fat and a low protein is more beneficial than having a high protein and a high fat. That's a good tip. I'm going to write that one down. Yeah. So I think like if you were to get more of like a lean protein, that'd be better. I'm trying to think of other foods that I really like. Hmm. I do like dried or uh, not dried fruit. Well, I do like dried fruit, but I like frozen fruit a lot. Frozen fruit. Mm-hmm. I love it. I gotta believe it's got a longer shelf life. 1000%. Like frozen mango is my favorite thing because Mm -hmm. I eat it like it's my ice cream. Do you eat it frozen? Do you let it thaw out? Is that a stupid question? Yes, it is. No, it's definitely not because I definitely eat it frozen. I mean, obviously like I can chew into it. Fruit's not supposed to crunch, is it? No. So if it's frozen, it crunches. Yeah, but I don't don't eat it completely frozen. So yeah, I guess I wait for it to thaw for like two minutes. All right. If you really want my my secret tip, I, I microwave it. You microwave mangoes. I microwave. Don't tell anybody, listeners. You heard it from the uh, the Hawaiian flower. What is it? What's your <laughs> the name? The heavenly flower. Leilani. I microwave my frozen mango sometimes, but only because I like want it, and I'm like I don't have time for it to thaw, so I just like let it kind of like. Mm. But yeah, so th- those are I would say Adobe. Your best bet would be like getting beans, rice, or quinoa. Quinoa. That's what I meant to say. Now that's a buzzword. I think we should talk about that because a lot of people hear it. For a while it was kale. Now it's quinoa. And just in the last, what is it, year, six months, through when I started hearing about it, I never heard of that before. You probably I'm way did. older than you. When I was your age, I had no one know what a quinoa was. You probably said quinoa. I might have. I grew up in Wisconsin <laughs> and probably said cheese is what I said. Can I get cheese? They serve quinoa you. Quinoa cheese. Quinoa. Yeah. Really so like what is what is quinoa? Is it diabetic friendly? Do you recommend it? Quinoa is diabetic friendly and it's a great source of fiber as well. And it's like a whole grain. It almost tastes like a rice, okay. but it's not. It just tastes like cut up little rice almost. But it's really, really, really yummy. And it's a good carbohydrate source and gives you a lot of fuel and has a lower glycemic index, which means it does not cause a blood sugar spike. Quinoa also has some protein, which is great. I personally love quinoa, like a salad with quinoa, edamame, beans. So would it be like a soy, same benefits as soy? Soy's got a lot of those same, got some protein in it. Yeah. Edamame maybe? Quinoa doesn't have soy, but it would be great like to eat a nice big salad, guys, with quinoa, edamame, beans, and some vegetables. And And hot fudge on the top. Lemon juice, no doughy, not hot fudge. Organic hot fudge. Organic hot fudge. It would taste amazing. So I think there's definitely a way to find foods that are great staples. But I think honestly, like when you see the chip aisle, don't even go down the chip aisle. You know what? Just because we're doing the show, I've been really good about not doing that since we started this podcast. And I hope our listeners are the same way. It's like, just to be aware of it. I don't go down exactly what you said. It's like, get behind the the Satan. I'm not going down that because I'll have a whole cart full of that stuff. Yeah, and my mom used to tell me that. She'd be like, don't, well, she still says it. Don't buy a bag of something. Like buy stuff that is single serving size. Because whenever you have a bag of something or a cereal box or a bag of popcorn, you just grab, grab, grab because you don't know what a serving size is. 
You great. Well, your mom was a very smart young lady, and I'm very she impressed is. with her. And I, Elizabeth told us to bring some tips, and I want to squeeze this one in here because I used to work at a grocery store. Yeah. And if you're listening, and if you don't know when to shop, what time of day, I think it does matter because produce comes in early or late. I found out so avoid shopping midday. Yes. Because it, all the stale stuff's going to be out there, so go early because it comes in, or later in the day. And I just, I learned that from experience. So hopefully that'll pass along something for them. I think that's a great one. You want to get fresh. You don't want your stale quinoa. No. I mean, you like your brown bananas, but nobody else does. Yeah, Dobie, that's honestly a great tip. We try to help. I love it. I learned from you. We try to help. It's give and take. We give, we give and take here. <laughs> The Diabetes App is an online community platform that was created to help people living with diabetes find support and information in one spot. And on the Diabetes App, you can join groups and connect with other people all over the world who are also living with diabetes. I mean, for me, whenever I have a bad day, I find myself scrolling through the mental wellness group just to reassure myself that I'm not alone. The Diabetes App has a resource section where you can find articles, recipes, tips, and tricks for managing your diabetes. Download the Diabetes App today and connect with us right on the app. DieStrong is an online telehealth platform that connects you to medical and holistic professionals to help you manage your diabetes. Find registered dietitians, nutritionists, certified diabetes educators, and more without the hassle of having to go into a doctor's office. Wait, 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 wait. You mean a lazy bum like me can have appointments right from my computer? Sign me up. That's right, Dobie. And this week, our listeners can use promo code JMT25 for 25% off their first visit. Yeah, don't try to cheat and go to JMT26 because you're not going to get 26. It's 25. Go to www.diastronghealth.com. That's www.diastronghealth.com. I think we should do some like little Thursday testimonials, you know? Absolutely. Let's shout out to our listeners. We really appreciate it. And the good thing about a podcast is if you reach out to us, we care about you. We appreciate you. We see it ourselves. It doesn't go. We love we love our offstage pod squad, Elizabeth. Now we have Zach. Yeah, no, Zach is Zach. the enforcer. If we get any weirdos out there, Zach will come to your house with a taser and zap you. <laughs> friendly customer service kind of way. All of our listeners have been great so far. So let's shout out a couple. What do you think? All right. So I have one, if I can start. I have, I think I'm going to pronounce it. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Bully Sefatza. It's bully.bubbles on Instagram. But she has been the most like sweet, encouraging, supportive person alive. And is always like, oh my gosh, this is so relatable. You guys, you are awesome. Love the name already. She's great. So yeah, thank you for listening. And we love you. So you're awesome. Well, I have a shout out here. Uh, Andrew Phelps, he sent us his story. Uh, his blood sugar was over 700. Yikes. And he celebrated his 10-year diversity in March of this year. And he listens all the time. Nice. We'll say hello, Andrew. We thank you. We love you. And uh, hope you're under 700. Hope you're at least Amazing. 680. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. My second one is for Ali Isabel. And she DM'd us on Instagram and was kind of talking about how she loved Michelle and Tyler and their little girl. And she was saying thanks for showcasing so many different type 1s and type 2s because she's had type 1 diabetes for 27 years in July. So we applaud you for dealing with it for that long. That's amazing. And we love that you're listening. We love everybody that's listening. Also, I'd like to what quick shout out to uh, Ed Johnson from Wisconsin. Ed Johnson is a very good friend. He took, I teach comedy classes and he took my comedy class. He's a court mm. reporter. He was. And uh, Ed Johnson from Wisconsin became his comedy moniker. And he found out he was pre-diabetic. He goes, I didn't even know you did a uh, podcast about that. Yeah. But I listen to every one of them and I get informed. So thank you, Ed Johnson from Wisconsin. Honestly, guys, we love hearing these. So please, please, please share them. I like hearing them and I like reading them. It like gets me all excited. So also, Dobie, question of the pod. Oh, yes. I almost forgot to do that. Don't worry. I got it. What's your guilty pleasure from the grocery store? AKA your fun food. Uh, my guilty pleasure in the grocery store is Monica, the cashier in aisle seven. <laughs> She's a honey. She doesn't talk to me. No, I'm kidding. Hi, Monica. Monica, I hope you're listening to this. I'm not a stalker. I'm, I'm, I'm actual okay, fun what's food. Your actual fun food. Guilty pleasure. I really try to I try to be healthy, but I still backslide. Cheese. <laughs> it's a thing. You can't tell me. 99% of our listeners don't love cheese. Live, love cheese, everybody. Uh, uh, Elizabeth said, ketchup flavored popcorn. Weird Canadian things. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> Stay out of Canada. Popcorn? Eastern Canada. You know what's funny? I do like ketchup and I do like popcorn. Not together. So I guess I should try that. How about popcorn flavored uh, ketchup? Do they have that? Ketchup flavored popcorn. Elizabeth is going to send us some. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Mine, my favorite is um 
I'd say my fun food. Oh, wait, I have a good one. It's dates. Frozen mangoes doesn't count? Okay. Love dates. I love dates and I love dried mango. They're so good. Well, I want to have a date with Monica you know and are? Miles. So yeah, I know what dates are. It's old school. That's okay. good stuff. Monica, so mine are dates and Dobie loves you. So today, Heather, you're going to have a date with Monica. Well, there if she's go. diabetic, she's listening and it's a, it's destiny. <laughs> so how can people get a hold of us, Sammy? Because shout us out. Let us know you're listening. We want you to exercise when you're listening to us. That'll be even better. Get out there and do those steps. Shake your yeah. groove thing. Shake your, they do your, uh, what is it? I can't think of it now. The booty, double booty bounce. I'm so old. The booty shake. The bo- uh, Big Booty Remix. Big you mean booty the song? Remix. Why do I keep forgetting? Elizabeth talks about like that all the time. friends? Yeah, guys. Check it out. Listen to it. Yeah, so you can find us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at JustMyTypePod underscore Facebook at JustMyTypePod and our hashtag JustMyTypePod. And we'd love if you guys could give us a five-star review and rating, please, because it really helps. And we're getting the diabetes community together, active and engaged, so we can entertain, educate, and engage. There might be millions of diabetics, but you are the only one we focus on. So you're important listening to us. We appreciate you. Yeah. What is the the cherry on the Sunday, Sammy? Dobie, do you want to do it this time? No, this is your phrase. I could never impede on it. I love it when you say it. Here is Sammy with the cherry on the Sunday. Go ahead and say it, kid. Say la vie, baby. This is the Just My Type podcast.